Hello everyone, welcome to Developers Checkpoint and in today's video we are going to learn about the repeatable read isolation level in the database. So what are the topics that we are going to cover today? So firstly we are going to see the issues with the read committed isolation level. I have covered the read committed isolation level in the previous video. I will highly suggest you to go through that video before jumping into this video. After having the issues of the read committed isolation level, we will see example where the repeatable read solves those problems. And after that, we are going to see the internal implementation of the repeatable reads. So in this video, we are going to understand that what are the issues that come across using the read committed isolation level. To demonstrate the issue, I will be running MySQL on a Docker container. So I will run the Docker PS and I have this container running. So I'm going to execute some commands inside the container. So I am going to run Docker exec hyphen it the name of the container and the command that is going to run is fh. And similar thing I am going to do in the other terminal. I'm using two terminals here to simulate uh, some kind of concurrency. I am going to run a MySQL, MySQL hyphen u root and hyphen p password. The password is new password. You can see the setup of the MySQL using Docker in the previous videos. And I am going to do the same here. Okay, so now I have two instances of MySQL client running. So I'm inside my MySQL container. So this is my MySQL client and I'm going to use the trans database. So I have a table name as person. So I'm going to read from that table. Select asterisk from persons. And what I can see is their person IDs and their account balances. So firstly, I am going to set the transaction level to read committed. So I'm going to set that. Okay, now let me start a transaction. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to do a select asterisk from persons. And on the other terminal, I'm going to use the same database. And I am going to insert some values. Okay, so for example, currently I have inserted. So there were person ID is still 5 here. So I am going to insert person ID 6. And value of rupees. Let's say 1000 here. Okay, now let us run another query. Select sum of account balances from persons. And now commit that transaction. So if you see here, the total of these 5 account balances is going to be 13,800. But instead we get 14,800 because there is values inserted into the database at that time we are running the transaction. Okay, now let us again run the select asterisk from persons and we are having six values here. Okay, so there was inconsistency in during the our transaction. There were five entries at the beginning of the transaction and while we were reading other values, there was an update operation done or insert operation done on the table and which resulted in the different values at the different point in our transaction. Such type of issue is known as a non-repeatable read because firstly when we read data from the table during the transaction we got some other values and at the other point in time when we tried reading values from the data from the table we got some other values. So such issues are known as non-repeatable reads and to solve this problem there is another type of isolation level known as a repeatable read. Okay so firstly let's and demonstrate that how the repeatable reads solve this problem I am going to clear my terminal to solve such type of problems there is another type of isolation level supported by the databases known as the repeatable read okay so firstly I am going to set the isolation level to repeatable read okay now I am going to start transaction okay start transaction I am going to <coughs> select a strict from persons we have Six entries. Now I'm going to insert another value into the database. This is seven. The account balance will remain the same. And if I try to read again from the database, from the same table, I am going to read the same number of values or the same values that was at the earlier stage of the transaction. So if I commit the transaction here, now perform a read operation, I am going to see the latest or the updated values of the table. So what we can conclude here. So in the read committed isolation level, we saw that when we started a transaction, we read some values from the table and there was a, another transaction that updated the value of the table. So at a different point 
in the transaction we got some other values okay so here was five values there were six values during the transaction so that was a non repeatable read issue so to solve that issue there was a, another isolation level known as a repeatable read what does this isolation level do this isolation level makes the consistency of the database during the transaction so if you start a transaction and there are n number of rows in the transaction if any update or write operation is performed on these rows these changes will not be reflected until the transaction is committed okay so what is going to be the internal implementation of the repeatable reads so repeatable reads uses two things firstly it acquires a write lock on the rows that are going to be updated so this is done in order to avoid other transaction to change the values of the rows during the transaction and it also uses another thing known as the mvcc all the multi version concurrency control so let's try to understand that how the repeatable reads uses these two things in order to achieve this so let us assume that we are having a set of rows and these number of rows are involved are going to be involved in the transaction okay so what firstly what is going to happen so when you are going to start a transaction the database is going to create a copy or the snapshot of the date of the rows so for example there were five rows that were involved in this transaction so the database is going to create the snapshot of those five rows so all the read and write operations that are to be done by the transaction will be performed only on this snapshot so whenever we are going to perform a write operation we will put a write lock on those rows in order to avoid dirty write by any other transaction okay so what we have understood till now so whenever we are going to start a transaction with the repeatable read isolation level the database is going to create a copy of those rows that are involved in the transaction and all the read and write operations are done via those snapshot only due to the implementation of this the repeatable read has these two properties so firstly let us assume that this is our timeline and there were few transaction for example this is transaction 1 so and this is our transaction t so all the transactions that were started before this transaction but are not committed till now will not be reflected into the read repeatable read isolation level and other property will be if any transaction is started after this for example this is transaction t2 so if any other transaction is started after we have started our transaction the values updated by this transaction will not be reflected into our transaction okay so any transaction that were not committed at this point any transaction those were not committed till the point we started our transaction the write operations performed by those transactions will not be reflected in case of the repeatable reads so that's enough for the video please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel if you like the content thank you